time, ladies and gentlemen. Right, are you ready for your next act? Yeah. Yeah. Please welcome the stage, Gordon Cumberland! We're on. In 1925, two students who just graduated from the Royal College of Art, Edward Borden and Eric Rebellious, went on a bicycle tour of Montfort, Essex. They put up for bed and breakfast at this house here, Brick House in Great Barfield, which is between Southampton and, and Thaxter. And they found that half of the house was for rent. And so they took on a lease at seven and six a week, that's 15 pounds in today's money, or two up and two down. When Borden married in 1932, his father bought the whole house for them for 500 pounds. And because it was too big for two people, he persuaded Eric Riddis and his new wife, Charlotte, to share the, the house with them. And he would see them in the garden of Brick House by Eric Riddis. In 1933, John Aldridge had ended up in Great Barfield, living at Place House, and they became great friends with Edward Borden. And here's a drawing by Borden of Aldridge in the pub. They started a business venture making wallpapers, but uh, the war brought that to an end. At the beginning of the war, both Borden and Rovillius were appointed as official war artists. Borden survived Dunkirk, this is his line of of Dunkirk, and also survived being torpedoed on the Laconia in the Atlantic, spent three days in an open boat, was then recovered by the U-boat who had sunk them, <laughs> interned in Casablanca for four months before being released by the American forces, which gave him a lifelong hatred of the French. <laughs> and, and this is an image that he did in 1946 for an illustration for a book called Traveller's Verse, but obviously drawing on his experience there. Um, Rodinius, um, in 1940, went to HMS Dolphin, a submarine training depot at Gosport, and produced these amazing, luminous images of submarines. I think some of the most magical pictures to come out of the war. And here is RF Sawbridgeworth no longer exists, May 1942, left unfinished by Rubidus with his friend Piggy Angus when he went off to Iceland. He never came back because he was lost on an AC rescue mission in 1942. In 1941, then artist friends of Borden came out of London to escape the Blitz. Some of them would have done the blitz when they were at school. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a, um, Michael, Michael Rothman's side here. His wife, Duffy Ayers, in a later portrait by Richard Borden in her house in Bloomsbury. If it really goes over, so I'll tell you a story. The statue here was built in Camden Market and had to be repaired. So it's known in the family as Arrow Dighty. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. Um, he also, also came out. This is his um, lithograph of the coronation preparation in 1915. After the war, um, Bolton and Walter Simon went back to teaching at the Royal College, and when Walter Hoyle graduated, Bolton found him um, a cottage in, in Great Barfield. Because the agricultural depression had been so great between the wars that you, know, you, you could afford um, houses, even if you were just a uh, newly graduated student. Bernard Cheese was living in Thaxted, close by. Here's some of his work. His wife, Sheila Robinson, um, divorced him and moved to Great Bardfield. And George Chapman arrived in 1948. So, by accident, a group of influential and interesting artists had all settled in this one, one village. In 1953, Coronation Year, they opened their houses, um, which had never been done before, but it was the start of now the open studio um, movement, which every county has once a year. In 1985, a group of 
friends and collectors of their, of their work thought it would be good to have a permanent collection of these artists. And so the Fly Art Gallery was lying mouldering there unloved and unused since, since 1971. It had been built by Francis Gibson, who was a rather dilettante Quaker businessman for his own collection of pictures. He only enjoyed it for two years project because he died in 1958, two years after he built it. But it was there. Amongst this small group of friends who started the gallery, because in England, they said, we will start a society, it shall be called the Fry Art Gallery Society, and we shall take a lease on the, on the, on the, the, the Fry Art Gallery. Um, and amongst them were Olive Cook, and who was now the widow of Edwin Smith, the great landscape photographer. Some of you will know him. So, it was started by just a few London pictures in 19, 1987. Today, there's a collection of 900 pictures and a collection of 700 illustrated books. And they include now the work of a second generation of Barfield artists. So here's Richard Borden, Edward, Edward Borden's son. And I think it's brilliant. The big artist who could make a rabbit look threatening. <laughs> And Chloe Cheese, who was the daughter of Sheila Robinson and Bernard Cheese. And also other artists who were in the area, George Clarkson, who was earlier, and Keith Thorne, who was the last um, major artist to come into our collection. The society now has 900 members. Um, they pay a minimum of five pounds each. We have 150 life members. Uh, which costs only a hundred pounds. Okay. <laughs> it's happened before. And um, we make our own income from an annual sale by invited artists, now famous. People start queuing at half past nine on a November Saturday morning for a 12 o'clock opening. Because there are 400 works, which include work by Maggie Hamling, John Bellamy, some artists who are up and coming, Mark Hurd, we'll see if we go to tape, you can't see anything but Mark Hurd these days. And Johnny Hanna. And here is the sale. It's like Harrod's sale. We sell 200 pictures, half of which are, un are unfamed, in a day and a half. Last year we took £40,000 in a day and a half. And this is just for fun, because that's my granddaughter, starting early. <laughs> the society is run by 18 trustees and over 60 volunteers. But you see, it's, it's quite fun. We only do it for fun. And those who are in the museum world will note the importance of the biscuit tin. <laughs> Mesdames, Messieurs, l'exposition est terminée. <laughs> Most refined to an end of set ever.